A big coronal hole is rotating into the Earth's strike zone and it could bring us a much needed aurora. And a large filament erupts off of the southern pole and it's a sight for sore eyes. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week is about to get very interesting. As we flip to our front side sun, you can see that massive coronal hole. That's about to rotate in through the Earth's strike zone and will do so over the next couple days. It's going to be sending us some fast solar wind, and that could bring some much needed aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. Now, the last time we saw this coronal hole, it brought us up to storm levels. So you aurora photographers, definitely get your batteries charged because you're going to need it. There's got a really good chance for some decent aurora show. Now, also, we had a polar coronal filament that lifted off over the last day or so. I haven't seen one lift off from about this size in quite some time. And the fact that it's really close to the poles, all of that is an indication that solar cycle 25 is getting much closer. But of course, we're not there yet. As we switch to our far side monitor, this is stereo, and it's kind of looking at the sun from the side. You can see we still have a very spotless sun even on the far side. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we're still going to be dealing with some poor uh, radio propagation easily over the next week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 28th. So you night sky watchers, now's a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky and perhaps some aurora. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from the big coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. In fact, up to a 70% chance of a major storm. So you high latitude aurora photographers, get ready. You could easily have a show in through the weekend and possibly beyond. Now, as we look down at mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting about active conditions, but up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm. So again, aurora photographers, even down at mid-latitude, you could be in for a really good show as we near the weekend. And then as things begin to go into the beginning of next week, things should begin to settle down. So make sure you can catch the aurora as it happens. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. Everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. Yes, I know I sound like a broken record, but we have a spotless sun right now. So GPS users, this should make you very happy. On Earth's day side, we have no risk for radio blackouts. But the solar flux is now dropping into the mid-60s. As a matter of fact, this may be as low as we've seen this solar minimum for solar flux. And that means the day side propagation for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders is probably pretty dismal, especially near noon. Although I have been hearing reports of people around 10 and 15 meters getting some decent propagation on the bands. And on top of that, we do have this solar storm coming. So that six meter band may give us some magic, especially near the gray line. So definitely try that out if you've been suffering with some really bad radio propagation. And also because of that solar storm, you GPS users, I know your day side propagation will be good, but it may not be so good on the night side, so be aware. Now also because we are nearing solar minimum, we're in solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it usually would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely getting a bit interesting. We have that big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind that could bump us easily up to storm levels at mid-latitudes and even moderate storm levels at high latitudes. So your roar photographers, you should definitely get a show, especially at high latitudes, and even you at mid-latitudes, you might catch some really decent aurora show before things begin to calm down. So be sure to charge your batteries. Now, amateur radio operators operators and emergency responders, well, things are not looking so great for you. We've been seeing some of the lowest solar flux numbers that we've seen all during this entire solar minimum. So your day side propagation may not be all that great unless you're around 15 meters or below. And then the effects of that disturbed solar wind and then the solar storm could actually help you a bit on the day side. But of course, once you get to the night side, well, then all bets are off because that solar storm could disrupt 
uh, propagation on pretty much all the bands. Now you GPS users, well, your day side uh, GPS reception should look pretty good because we have no worries with a spotless sun and no worries about radio blackouts, but we do have that solar storm coming. So when it hits, you're going to have to stay away from the dawn dust terminators and also away from Aurora in order for your GPS reception to be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.